Calm down. <laughs> I got married to my first and only husband <laughs> in 1999. We married young. I was a week shy of 20. He was a strapping young man of 22. I gave this man the skinniest years of my life. We thought it wise to wait to start a family that we would hold off for five years, then talk about it. We blinked, and it was five years later. So discussion and planning began. We stopped any preventative measures. <laughs> we took the goalie off the ice, so to speak. We bought the dream house to fill it with our beautiful, intelligent, and angelic offspring. But in the back of my mind, I think I always knew I was infertile. You know, the feeling in your gut that is either the bad pizza you ate or from intuition. For nearly a decade, we tried to conceive. Tests were run, and there was little hope for bearing children. So we explored uh, fostering with the intent to adopt. The process was almost as discouraging as trying to find a good pair of jeans. <laughs> I think the jeans is worse. <laughs> Nothing seemed to be working out. We even lost the big house, which seemed to be a symbol of the dead dream. So, I set out to live a life of adventure. I was determined to do things people with kids couldn't do. <laughs> you know. Things like traveling, sleeping in, antiquing, and brunch. <laughs> yes, brunch. <laughs> I brunch like it's my job. Then, I quit going to baby showers, because it hurt. Like when you have a sunburn on your shoulders, and even the softest of t-shirts grazes your skin, you come unhinged. It even hurt to be around my husband. No amount of aloe could soothe that ache. The distance grew between us, and it began to feel like the Grand Canyon. I emotionally abandoned him, but he fought for me. He fought for our marriage, and in the process, made me feel like I was worth fighting for. I am. <laughs> I told him, I want to go to Paris. I want someone to kiss me under the Eiffel Tower, and I sure hope that guy is you. <laughs> Thus began planning our vacation of a lifetime. We decided at that point, just a couple months away from our 15th anniversary, we would try once more when we returned home from being Parisians for two weeks that we would explore every option. Then we would put this dream to bed and move on with our life. The life we had was already extraordinary because we have each other. We would be okay no matter the outcome. Christmas in Paris was magical, but my heart couldn't help but ponder wouldn't this be a great way to end this childless chapter of our lives? I believe the term for this is referred to as baby moon. We hit the ground running January of 2014. Soon came appointments, tests, medications, diet changes, <laughs> phone calls to see what medical procedures my insurance would cover, phone calls to my parents. A call came on a lazy Saturday in April as we got ready to brunch. <laughs> My husband emerged from the steamy bathroom 
looking like the middle-aged music video of my dreams. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> His phone rang, he answered. Someone wanted to meet us that Monday to discuss adoption of two-year-old twin boys. <laughs> so we hit the ground running again. Only this time it was trips to Home Depot to buy child safety stuff, putting up cribs, putting up baby gates, calls to employers, happy, tear-filled phone calls to parents. And we need a lawyer and an adoption agency and a social worker to do a home study. And the names of people who can broker a deal to sell a kidney, because how am I going to pay for all this crap? <laughs> Days later, when I came face to face with Wyatt and Levi, bond was instant. My heart knew them. I recognized them, but didn't know from where. Then I recalled a dream I'd had eight years earlier about these very boys. Their eyes look like mine. Their personalities, tears fell. These were my children, made just for me. God's gifts. Wyatt crawled up onto my lap and laid in my arms, gazing into my eyes. It was like when a nurse hands you your newborn. Just add water, instant family. <laughs> Love coursed through my veins like a rush of adrenaline. That was three years ago. That was five shoe sizes, potty training, toddler bed, twin bed, bunk beds. Moving to a bigger house, dozens of forts, and took a wars ago. Gone are the days of sleeping in on the weekends, antiquing and brunching like I get paid for it. <laughs> Where there once was a coffee table is now a climbing structure. Where there should be a dining table, there is a train table. You walk through the house in the dark at your own risk, <laughs> concluding that Legos are an effective security system to detour intruders. Uh, that is if the intruders are barefoot. <laughs> the sink piles up with dishes almost as fast as the boys grow out of pants. The laundry pile has taken over and is now a replica of Mount Hood. <laughs> I lied. The three sisters would, <laughs> would be more accurate. So I'm still figuring out this whole working mom thing. Now we're in kindergarten. The old adage, the days are long, but the years are short, could not be more true. I guess you could say I did put my dream to bed. I tuck them both in every night. <laughs>